Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 47 of the platform specific series of my 6502 assembly programming tutorials. We're looking at sound on the NES again today. Now, we did look at it before. Last time we wrote a very simple driver, which I referred to as Chibi Sound, just designed for simple bleeps like an Atari type game. This time we're looking at a more advanced version, which I refer to as Chibi Sound Pro. Now, this is a bit of an exaggeration. It's not really that professional, but it's a little bit better than last time. And whereas Chibi Sound is just designed for simple beeps, Chibi Sound Pro, Pro is designed for simple music and more um, sequenced sound effects, shall we say. So it's the more advanced version that is um, being designed for multi-platform games so that we can write a song and we can play it on multiple systems and it should sound something like the same song on all of them. Now, uh, the way we're doing this is we, we're going to write our own tracker in a later lesson. We, I've got my own tracking software and the binary files that creates will play in roughly the same way on all systems. And the way we achieve this is the Chibi Sound Pro driver. And what this does is it allows us to specify a channel number, a frequency and whether noise is on or off and a volume. And this will set that channel um, however is appropriate based on the hardware, the underlying hardware of that system. And it will set the, um, the attributes and hopefully make a sound that is similar. Now, now the pitches, the low and high pitch, are the same on all systems in the sense that a low number is a low pitch and a high number is a high pitch. However, the frequencies will vary because the hardware underneath doesn't always work in a remotely similar way on all of these systems. You know, we might have a linear frequency curve on one and we might have a strange curve on another one. So it, it's not realistic to make the numbers provide the same sound on all systems. But what we do do is we create a, an octave lookup table so that we can get um, defined notes. Uh, we define all of the main notes, C, D, E, F, and then we can calculate a sharp or a flat by get, be calculating a between note between the two, divide the, add the two together, divide them by two. So that's what we're going to be doing in today's example. So this is, um, say, this is this driver that we will use later for playing music. Now the Chibi Sound Pro driver uses four entries in the zero page, and these, as always, mimic the Z80. This was a Z80 program originally, but it's been ported to other systems. Now the zero page entry marked as H will be the channel number in bits zero to six, so channels from zero to one twenty-seven. Although we're only supporting four virtual channels. For this one and three physical channels, they will just wrap around after that. You'll see what I mean by that later on. We, we have to support whatever the driver defines as the standard. So as I say, we could be given a channel number of 127. We have to do something with that. We could ignore it, but we have to do something with it. So um, that's what we do. Now the volume is a single byte, so that's a 0 to 255, with 0 being the, the quietest and 255 being the loudest. 0 is actually off, so we turn off the channel in that case. And then we have a 16-bit pitch from 0 to 65535, of course. And so that is passed in DE. Now, the one remaining bit is the top bit of the H entry, which um, so most of H is the channel number, but the top bit is noise on or off. And so this will create distortion effects, and we use those for things like drums. So a uh, low distortion could be used as a kick drum, or high distortion could be used as a cymbal. So um, that is everything that Chibi Sound provides. Not very much, I know, but the, the important thing is that we need to we need to have functionality that is consistent on all systems. And so things like panning positions and envelopes and, um, you know, sweep effects that some sound cards can do, other sounds cannot. And so at this stage, I just wanted to get a bare minimum amount of functionality to be able to create simple music. And this is the bare minimum functionality that I felt was appropriate. OK, so what about the NES hardware? Well, the NES hardware effectively has five channels, but um, actually only three of those are remotely usable for standard tones, and one of those is usable for noise. Now, these all start from a memory mapped port base of 4000, um, and then there's one at 4004, one at 4008, one at 4000 and C, and one at 4010. Now, um, we're going to use channels one and two, which are rectangle for two of the tone channels. We're gonna to need to really support three tone channels. Uh, this is because um, mostly I'm working on the on the basis of the AY chip of the Amstrad CPC type systems that had three tone channels. And also each of those tone channels could do noise, which is another limitation we're gonna to have to deal with because we've only got one noise channel. So we're gonna to have to simulate that. Now we're going to use the triangle channel as a possible third channel. It won't sound exactly the same, but there's not much we can do about that. And then we're going to use the noise channel and we're going to detect whenever we're told to turn on the noise of either of the three channels that we're using for other purposes. And we're going to turn the noise on and off at that time. And again, you'll see code that is handling that. 
Now we have one final register that's worth bearing in mind. 4015 is kind of the mixer. Basically, this turns on and off the other channels. So we need to do that. Now, the other thing, though, is writing to this actually resets the frequency. So the, the pitch will be reset. So we need to set the pitch after we turn the channel on. So that's what we're going to see in our code. We're going to come back to this later on. But we're now going to go over to our code and we're going to see and hear some examples. So, so let's turn on the oscilloscope. There we go. Um, and let's hear some of the examples we've got. We've got two examples. Now, the first one is the tone test, which is what I used to create the frequency table. Now, um, we ha I created a table. And what I do is I've got a frequency chart. And then I, I use some oscilloscope software like this. And I mon monitor the frequencies to get them to match. So if I press the up and down key on my um, keyboard, which is emulating the joystick, you can see we're able to change the pitch here so I can do various pitches and then if I press the fire button you can hear we get a noise effect so that's just a test routine to allow me to test the pitches and the noises easily now as I say there is a limitation with this system that the third channel does not sound exactly like the others so if I just change this to channel 2 which is the third channel 0 1 and 2 you see now you, you'll see that is a triangle wave you can see if I shut up there that above me it's a definitely a triangle wave um, it doesn't sound quite the same, but it, it's as close as we can realistically get it. Now, the purpose of all of this is music. And so here I've got the Chibi Tracks test, which is a test of the music software. So this is some music that was converted. Um, it was originally written for um, so the Suck Shoot game. The Suck Hunt game, sorry, um, th this was the music that was composed for that. And actually, Narcos Tracker and I converted it, we re, re engineered the instruments using the Chibi Tracks software. And um, so, this is a piece of music that was categorically not created for the NES, but it sounds at least reasonably similar because of, as I say, the um, driver is emulating it. So, there we go. So, as I say, just a little demonstration there to prove that. This is this does indeed work and what we can do with it. So what we're going to look at today is the Chibi Sound driver. Now the, the first the Chibi Sound Pro driver. Now the first thing you can see here is that we've got this octave table, and this is a range of values that we would pass in DE to get particular notes. So we start E F G A B C a D. And if we wanted C sharp, we would take the value between of C and D, add them together, and then divide it by two. And if we wanted various more complex pitch bends, we might do decide to calculate fractions, which is what I do in um, in Chibi Tracks. So there we go. So we've got a various octaves here. So this table here allows us for um, six octaves, a very low frequency, which isn't really matched at all, and a very high frequency, which just fin finishes off the range. So that's what we've got there. Now we're going to look at all of the code here. Um, there's three routines basically. The update routine is not needed on this system. That is for systems like the Spectrum, which need constant processing power to keep the tone playing. So that update would be run regularly to keep the tone playing, but this system does not need that. There is an initialization routine, which is run just once. And on this system, we are just initializing this channel mixer variable, which we'll see in just a moment. We're setting that to zero to start. And then the set routine is the main routine. We run this whenever we want to change the sound that a channel is playing. And we would pass to this the zero page entries H, L, and D, E for the volume and the channel and also the noise on and off, as I say, the top bit and the pitch. So that's what we're going to see. Now, let's just go to the bottom and let's discuss some of the data that we are going to need for this software to work correctly. Now, as I say, we could be passed a channel number up to 127. We don't have 127 channels. We only have three that we can use, uh, three tone channels. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the bottom two bits of the channel number, and then we're going to use that, uh, which will now be a four entry lookup with this lookup table channel map. And these is, are the bottom bytes of the addresses of our ports. So our top byte will always be four zero, and then we will either have double zero, 04 or 08. And you can see here we've gone 0484. And the reason we've gone back to 4 rather than 0 is channel 0 is considered to be the main channel by Chibi Tracks. So if, if you are only going to use one channel, you use channel 0. If you're only going to use two channels, you use 0 and 1. And if you're going to use 3, you use 0, 1, and 2, and so on. I tend to use channel 2 for percussion. I use channel 0 for my main theme and channel 1 for sort of backing tones and things like that. So that, that's how it's recommended you use it. So the best channel is always channel 0. And 
that's why I don't reuse channel zero for the fourth option there. Now, as well as a byte address for the lookup for the um, ports that we need to control, the base of the ports, we also have a channel mask. And there's a bit here you can see which matches, and that is for the port 4015, which we need to set the bits on and off to turn the channels on and off. We have a series of bytes here in channel noise. This is just some memory that we will use. Um, this is designed so that we can um, simulate three noise channels. As I say, each of the channels should allow the noise to be turned on and off independently for that channel. However, we only have one noise channel that we will turn off um, whenever a channel is enabled and disabled. So we need to track the noise state of the virtual channels and then map that, that to the physical channel so that this system will work in the same way as the AY sound chip would have done. Okay, and finally we have a channel mixer byte which is just a one byte entry for port 4015 and we use that to remember what 4015 had before so that we don't need to read back from 4015. Okay, so that's um, what the theory is. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at this Chibi Sound set routine and we're going to look at how this actually handles the processing of its past data to make the sounds. Okay, so the first thing we're doing is we're taking the L entry which is the channel number and we're taking the bottom two bits and so as I say we're ignoring all but the bottom two bits and this will cause the 128 theoretical channels to just keep wrapping around every four channels which is good enough as I say Chibi Tracks really only is designed currently for three channels so that'd be fine. So we're loading th that, we're getting those two bits and we're transferring that to Y and so that is going to be used as an offset. We're then loading B with 40. BC is going to port point to the base port, so 4404 or 48 basically. So that's what B and is doing there. And then we're loading in the second byte into C. So BC, the BC pair now, is the address of the base of our ports and then we can use Y as an offset later on. Okay. Next, we're getting the, the bit that we will need to set in port 4015 for the current channel, and we're storing that in the X register. We don't use the X register for anything else throughout this routine, so let's do that now. Okay. Next, what we're doing is we're checking the top bit of L, and we're seeing if we're being told to turn the noise on. Now, if we are being told to turn the noise on, then what we're doing is we are setting the channel noise flag, which is a four byte um, table that we are using to track the virtual noise state. So we're just storing the current non-zero value to that at the, the offset for the current virtual channel. And that is marking that as enabled. Anything that's not zero will mark that as an enabled. And then we're running the silence channel routine. And this is to silence the tone channel that we are being told to turn noise on for. Now we could actually leave that running. It gives a different sound effect, but um, generally I just turn the tone off. I, I think you know, just having the pure noise is what we, we will do in this case. As I say, this is a personal preference here. So we're silencing the noise, the tone when we turn the noise on here. Um, we're going to see that silence routine in just a moment. And then we're changing C to point to zero C. And that's because we're, we're basically bypassing the tone channel and we're passing all of the um, settings to this noise channel here. That's what we're going to do. Now, what we're doing next is we are running the set volume routine and we're forcing the channel four to be turned on here. Now we're gonna look at that as well in just a moment. We're gonna look at these as they come up later on in the code. Then what we're doing is we're taking the D byte, the DE pair is the frequency and we're bit shifting it. And we're, we only want the top four bits, but we need to invert them to make the frequencies match. So this is so that a low frequency number is a low sound, a low pitch sound and a high frequency is like a very high distortion symbol type sound. That's what we're doing there. And then we're setting the um, length counter load register here. We, we just need to do that as well. So these are all relating to the noise channel. And then if we are turning noise on, that's all we need to do. So this is all we need to do to set a, a valid noise sound. That's pretty straightforward. Now, if we've been told that the noise is off, what we actually want to do first is check if the noise was previously on, because as I say, we're basically treating these three channels, or four if you consider the virtual one, um, to all have a noise channel, but that's not actually true. And so if we've now been told that the noise is off, we need to actually maybe turn that noise channel off. So we're checking if the previous noise state of this virtual channel was on, and if it wasn't, then we can just skip, but if it was, we need to turn it off. So then we're storing a zero to the channel noise state here. And then what we're doing here is we are effectively 
I'm setting the bit four to zero here and we're running the mixed channel routine and we'll see that later as well. But basically this is setting the bit four to zero here, which will mute the noise. This is the channel enable register that will turn the noise channel off and silence it. Okay. Now here at this point, we are actually going to set the tone channel to the tone we want. So we're running this set volume routine first. And this will set the volume of the channel and also turn the channel on in 4015. So this is effectively going to set the first byte of whatever channel we're using here. Um, and it's also going to set the mixer setting here because remember when we set that, it resets the frequency. So we want to do that first. So that's what we're doing here. We're gonna have a look at that routine in a moment. And then what we're doing here is we're bit shifting the 16 bits of our past frequency. And basically we want to reduce this down to 10. So we're just doing some bit shifting there and getting it in the right places. We're flipping the bits because the frequency is the opposite way around to what we want here. And then we're storing that to the port offset by three here. Now, basically, we, if we were pointing to channel zero, we would have our base pointed to 4000 in BC and offset by three would be pointing to this one here, which um, initially we're going to set the H bits there and then we're going to decrease Y and then we're going to set the L bits. Now we're using D here. We've actually ended up swapping around. So because we've the bit shifting we've done, the high part is now in the accumulator and the low part is now in D. Um, a bit weird there, but that was the most efficient way I could get this to work. So we saved some commands, but we flipped our bits around now. It should be pointed out that um, the Chibi Tracker, um, the Chibi Sound Pro software doesn't require the entries in the zero page to stay the same at the end. There's no requirement on that. So we, we can just mess those up if we want, that's fine. So that's what we've done there. Now, at this point, we're basically done. We've set our sound, we've set our volume, we've set our noise and we've set our volume. So we're just returning, okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the subroutines that we saw just executed for setting the volume and things like that. So the first one is the silence channel routine. Now we've got our X register with the bit that relates to the current channel within the, um, within the mixer um, register, as I, would, I will call it. But we need to flip the bits and set that to a mask that will keep the other channels as on, but set the current channels off. So what we're doing is we're transferring that to the accumulator, flipping all of the bits, um, ending that with the current mixer setting within that um, entry there in memory. And then we are storing that back to 4015. And that will basically turn the current channel off, but leave the other ones doing whatever they were doing before. And we store the new value back to channel mixer there and return. Now, if we want to enable the channel, it, it's basically just the opposite. We are taking the entry in the X register, oring that with the current mixer settings, which will effectively leave the other channels alone, but set the bit to one for the channel we want to turn on. And then we're jumping back up here and storing that to 4015 and then storing it to the channel mixer um, settings so that we know it for next time. Okay. So when we want to set the volume, what we're going to do is we're going to use the H entry. Now this is an eight bit entry, but we only want four bits for our current channel. So we're only taking the top part. Now, if the top part is all zero, we're going to silence the channel. And we do that by turning it off in the mixer, as we saw just up there. However, otherwise, what we're going to do is we are going to set the bits. And so we're going to shift this effectively to the right four times, but we're also actually going to set one of the bits of the um, duty cycle to one as well. That's why we've got a set carry there. And that's effectively going to be like oring in 01 and then six zeros there. That's what we're doing there. So we are storing that into the entry zero for our current channel. So the volume entry here and all the volume entry here. And that's what we're doing. And then we're running the enable channel routine here, which is going to basically do what we saw before, turn on the mixer entry for this channel. Now there's a problem though, because remember we're supporting three channels and one of those is the triangle channel, this one here, but the tri triangle channel works differently to the others. It doesn't have a volume entry in zero or anywhere else to my knowledge. So we have a, an exception here. And what we're doing here is we're branching off to this other routine for the triangle channel. And we're basically setting a new entry for the 408, which we've just actually set to the volume, but there is no volume there. So we're setting a fixed value to the linear counter load and turning the start on there. And so that's what we're doing there. And then what we're doing is we're setting one bit in the DE pair here. 
and this is we're basically setting the top bit of the pitch and that's because the pitch of the triangle channel and the pitch of the other channels is completely different unless we do that and so we're just making a basically a patch to the pitch there the the mid pitch is at least accurate the others I'm not entirely sure, but um, you know, unless I was going to start making some crazy lookup table to fix it, that was about all I could reasonably do. So there we go. So that's what we've done today. So there is an example of how we can create sounds on the um, on the um, Nintendo NES. We've got a good range of control here over all of the channels, and as I say, the important thing with this is that we can do it in a consistent way. Now, if you want something simpler, you can look at my um, previous Chibi Sound example, which just did basic beeps. Um, if you've liked what you've seen, please like and subscribe, and also ask you to consider backing me on Patreon. As part of um, this new series and this music thing, I've been writing um, some C Sharp software for music tracking and working on these tutorials on all of these different systems. It's taken an awful lot of time. It's been extremely stressful and if you're interested in this kind of thing please consider backing me because I am spending all my time doing this and a lot of these systems aren't really something I'm that interested in myself so I'm only really doing it because people sponsor me to do so anyway I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today thanks for watching and goodbye